Welcome to our yoga class. My name is Jim Kellerman. Uh, I am really happy to be joined today uh, by my friend and colleague Stephen Holbert here on keyboard in Cora. We are in northwestern Wisconsin, late April 2020. And pleased to be able to provide a space to do some yoga. It's really nice out, so we decided to do this outside. It's about 70 degrees here, which feels pretty good after winter. So before we get started, I'm going to ask if you can get a couple of things. One would be a belt. We're going to use this belt and also a blanket, some kind of a blanket or a pillow, whatever you want. So maybe hit pause on your device and go and get a blanket and a pillow and also grab your flute. Just kidding. You can do that if you have a flute and you want to play along with me. Okay. Assuming everybody's back, you'll notice what I did with that blanket. So the idea behind putting a blanket underneath your bottom is to, is to raise your pelvic, your, your hips and your pelvis up a little bit so you can start to tilt a bit on the forward side. Uh, in our culture, we tend to be uh, caved a lot of times with our back. And so this helps to open up the low back. So you want to have yourself right on the edge, not sitting back on top of it, but right on the edge. So find a comfortable spot if you want to use a pillow or however you want to do it. If you want to just sit on the floor, that's fine too. We're going to start in what's called an easy seat. So that is just sitting with our legs crossed. Sukhasana, Sukhasana, easy seat. And starting our class with a time to focus in on the breath, a time to focus in on being present to the next 50 to 60 minutes of practicing yoga. Begin by taking a deep breath in and letting it out. Start to breathe a little bit more deeply and focus on your out breath. Make your out breath just a little bit longer than your in breath. Probably be able to hear the spring peepers across the street, across the road. Maybe hear some red winged blackbirds. Might even hear a car going by. Continuing to breathe. And as you're sitting, you can notice the crown of your head lifting up a little bit higher and tucking your chin will help. You'll notice how the, the pillow or the blanket can help straighten up the spine. So continuing to breathe. Allowing your body to recalibrate through your breath. The theme of our time together right now is going to be transformation. The dictionary defines transformation as changing in form or structure. take this next hour to change our structure physically, change our form physically, change our structure mentally, literally changing the structure of the brain. Continuing to breathe. If it's comfortable closing your eyes, you can close your eyes.
This is late April, almost May. Six weeks of... I'm not even sure what to call it. The, the happenings of our, of our time. And the goal of this hour is to hopefully provide a space to be able to reconnect with the parts of yourself that have been so easy to be lost in the last six weeks. and gently opening your eyes, becoming aware and present to the room that you're in. I can hear some neighbors in the lake. yoga video comes complete with kayakers. <laughs> I love it. Okay, so coming back to presence and taking a big breath in and let it out nice and slow. Inhale your arms up overhead. And notice how that changes your upper body. See if you can keep that feeling of extension as you lift the crown of your head. And as you exhale, drop your arms down. Inhale, lifting arms up overhead. Exhale, hands down to the mat or the ground floor. Inhale, arms up overhead. Exhale, your arms down again. Take a moment to start to move your shoulders. Whatever I give as a suggestion, definitely follow this if it feels right, or if something else is calling you to move, definitely fine to do that. Totally okay. Moving the shoulders in both directions, some nice circles just to start to open up the upper back and neck back to neutral, tipping the chin under again to lift the whole upper body up. And I'm gonna just use my right to my right and rather than try and mirror because I think it'll just be easier. So just listen to my voice and you'll be going to the opposite from what you're looking on the screen. Right ear to right shoulder. Start to explore how that feels on the left side of your neck. Maybe moving a little bit back and forth. And back to neutral and then the same thing on the other side. Left ear to left shoulder. Opening up the trapezius muscle, being gentle. If it's early morning, be really gentle. And coming back to center, and then look over your right shoulder. And then extending your left hand out and down to the mat. You can look over and Start to turn and notice how extending your arm really helps to open up the shoulder. Coming back to center, same thing the other side, looking over your left shoulder. And extend your right arm. And giving yourself a little bit of a massage in the neck. I like to move my hand up and down and 
around that really helps. And coming back to center. In, inhale your arms up overhead and exhale, seated twist to the right. Use your left hand. There's a truck with a boat. And using the left hand to gently lever yourself just to give yourself a little bit of extra push. Inhale, lift up and exhale. Just allow your body to twist a little bit more. Inhale, arms up overhead and exhale. The other side to your left. I get to see Steven when I twist. And coming back up. And just some nice, easy neck circles. And again, do whatever feels organic to you to start to warm up. We're just getting a chance to warm up our bodies. Like we're warming up in this sun right here. I'm probably going to be sunburned tomorrow. You might have to put a filter on the camera for the Minnesota glare, Minnesota skin glare, Wisconsin skin glare. Yeah, and now this is a really nice movement, doing circles coming out of your hips. The key to doing this is try not to lift up your, your bum as you're on the opposite side. So continuing to root both sides of your behind down as you as you move in this circle. It's a nice movement. Of course, always try and complement and balance with the other direction. And we'll do just a little bit of forward fold. So Inhale, arms up overhead, and as you exhale, pull your belly button in towards your spine and lifting up and out of your pelvis. Just fold over your folded legs. Just go as far as it feels good. When you get to your edge, pause, breathe to lift up, and as you exhale, you can lean forward even farther. I'm closing my eyes a lot because it's kind of bright. I'll try to keep them open. And inhale, come back up and switch the fold. Switch the cross of your legs. And folding forward over the legs. Remember, every body is different. Everybody's body is different. My body is different than your body, so just going to where you feel your edge. If it's not quite this far down, that's entirely fine. If you're really flexible, maybe it's way farther. So we'll all do what we can. No judgment. And coming back up. Now gently move your pillow, but not too far because we're going to use it later. And. Meet me in what's called tabletop, which is hands and knees, all fours. Take a moment to feel the ground. If you're in the house or somewhere not outside, you'll feel the flat surface. This is a little bit of a lumpy, but worth it to be outside. So taking a moment, try not to dump all your weight into your wrists, but Really extend your fingers and almost feel like you're clawing the mat. And feel your shoulder blades drop down your back. And just take a moment to notice how this feels to be on all fours. And we'll start warming up the spine with a little cat and cow. And 
inhaling by dropping the belly and lifting the head. Exhale, lift your back up to the sky and drop your head. Inhale, dropping the belly and lifting the head. Exhale, lifting your back and dropping your head. Inhale, drop the belly down, lift the head up, and exhale, lift your back up to the sky, head down. Now, a little variation, slight variation on this. I call this the, the whip, whiplash or bull whip or sine wave cat cow. It's a very nice um, variation to give your spine some movement, starting from the base of your spine and beginning by lifting the sits bones up in the air and trying to drop each vertebrae one at a time. And then doing the same, going the opposite direction, but this time giving yourself some movement from the base of your spine to the top of your head. It's a really nice variation on cat and cow. Most yoga teachers will include some cat cow in the beginning. Steven's going to go to the keyboard. Now take a minute to just do whatever feels right, organic to you. I'm moving a little bit, sticking a leg out. I always like to stretch my inner thigh. Taking a minute here. Yeah. One more thing on the uh, hands and knees tabletop called a bird dog. Bird dog is a nice way to start to warm up the core as well. So take your right arm, extend it straight out from your shoulders parallel to the ground, and take your left leg. So the opposite right arm, left leg, both parallel to the ground. Now, if this is feeling like it's enough, that's absolutely fine. You can even also drop your hand and drop your foot, and that is going in the perfect direction as well. So it's really up to you and how you feel. And then as you exhale, bring your elbow to your knee and inhale, lifting and extending. Exhale, elbow to knee, inhale, Exhale. Inhale. Exhale one more time. Great. And we'll do that on the other side. So right leg goes straight back, left arm straight forward. Think of a horizontal plane for your whole body. And then exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, extend. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, extend. Exhale, whoa, elbow to knee. Inhale, extend. Exhale, elbow to knee. Inhale, extend. And it's a fun variation on the tabletop position. Now lift your left leg. Extend your left leg back, and then draw your left leg over your right, and plant your foot just to the outside of the right edge of your mat, and then look over your right shoulder, and lean into that left side. If you bend your knee just a little bit, I call this banana tabletop jiva squat. Really gets into the side of the hip. I drive a ton, and this has been really helpful. For me. Same thing on the other side, extend your right leg, draw it over your left, plant it just to the outside of the mat, and then look over your left shoulder, lean and dip down into your right side, bending the knee and feeling that right side. Great. Back to neutral tabletop. Tuck your toes underneath, plant your toes, and we'll lift up into the first downward dog. So keeping the knees bent, lift your hips up to the sky. Hands are, fingers are pointing 
straight forward with the mat. And with your knees bent, lift up your hips up to the sky. Rotate your shoulders. I'm gonna talk about this a little bit more later, but rotate your arms so that they're externally rotating. That means bring the elbows, the points of the elbows down towards, pointing towards the mat. And then as you get up to the top, then you can start to drop your heels just a bit. I'm gonna have to take these glasses off. Drop the heels. The goal is to get down to the ground. If you don't get there, that's fine too. I've been practicing yoga for 30 years, so it's been a long, long opportunity for me to get get my hamstrings to loosen up. Now, a lot of times, one of the dangers of downward dog is kind of creating almost like a tripod push-up kind of thing, and that's where that the shoulders can really make a difference. So downward dog can be a resting pose if you rotate your, your arms so that you can not feel that tension in the upper back and let your head just come straight out in line with your arms, ears right alongside your bicep. And take a couple of breaths here. Walk our hands forward. Walk the hands in between the, walk our hands, oops. <laughs> walk your feet, walk your hands back or walk your feet forward, walk your feet forward to meet your hands. And just folding forward, Uttanasana, forward fold. Sometimes it's nice to grab your elbows, it can help. Or I just like to just hang like a rag doll. It's absolutely fine, whatever feels good. And again, if you need to keep your knees bent, absolutely fine to keep the knees bent. Especially again, if it's the early morning. And we'll exhale and on our inhale, we're gonna lift all the way up. Come on, upward salute, upward salute. Exhale your hands down to your side. Let's do this again. Inhale, arms up overhead. And folding forward, coming from the hips, and folding forward, and then inhale up to a halfway lift. Knees are slightly bent, hands gently on the shins. And take a moment to explore really lengthening your spine in this position. Just reaching the crown of the head forward. Tuck in your chin. Exhale. Fold forward. Frame your feet with your hands and step your right foot back and drop your right knee and take a moment to establish your foundation. 70 degrees. <laughs> <laughs> I guess if you're in California, you probably think that's cold. So starting here, take a moment to really feel your hips. This is called a low lunge, or a low crescent lunge, sorry. Feel your hips. Notice if you can pull the left hip back, it's going to give you a little bit more of a square to the mat. And then if you need to, you can kind of scoot your left foot forward a little bit. The knee wants to be straight over the ankle. Now you can drop down and really feel the stretch in the inner right thigh. And then lifting the arms up overhead. This is a low crescent lunge. Staying here is absolutely fine. If you want some more intensity or more work, you can tuck your toes underneath and lift up to a crescent lunge, rising up, and really feeling that left side of your hip still pulling back. Whoa. Really. Okay. 
can be a challenge to be on the grass, but it just means really, really locking in on the foundation. Sometimes if you feel like you're pulling your legs together, it really helps in the balancing. And bring your hands down. And now I know I'm gonna have my back to you, but plant your right hand next to your left foot and then lift up. And you can do this again if you're down here. This is absolutely fine either way. This is a revolved lunge. And feeling your left side really open up. And opening up and planting. And this time we're gonna step the right foot forward to meet in a forward fold. Again, lifting up halfway. Just to balance and planting your hands around your feet and step your left foot back this time. And drop your left knee down, untuck your toes. And lifting up to a, a low crescent. And taking a moment just to check your hips. Arms, feeling like you got a beach ball in between your hands. Again, staying right here is absolutely fine. Or for more intensity, lifting up to a high crescent lunge. Shoulder blades dropping down, head, crown of the head lifting up, chin being tucked just a little bit will open up. Open up the back. And then planting your left hand next to your right foot. And opening up with your right shoulder up to the sky. Really opening up the heart and the chest. And continuing to breathe. Keeping the extended left leg strong with energy. Stepping your left foot forward again to the forward fold and lifting up halfway, halfway lift, exhale, fold forward, inhale, arms up overhead, and exhale your hands to your heart center. Taking a moment here, face the camera, taking a moment to talk about Tadasana and the idea of standing is something we just throw away a lot in the culture. So dropping your arms and here's that arm rotation thing. It's easy to tell when you're standing up. So Tadasana starts with your foundation, of course, and taking a minute to kind of feel the weight starting at the ground, coming up your ankles, feeling your knees, checking your hips, so anterior and posterior pelvic tilt. And this is the posterior pelvic tilt, or what we call the standard American posture. And we're kind of collapsed. We don't want that. We don't want to be too far anterior tilt either. Sometimes dancers can um, be going a little too far. So finding that neutral pelvis and then lifting the shoulder girdle up out of that foundation. And now if you take your hands and, and externally rotate both hands out, you'll feel how that changes your shoulders the difference between that. That's what I was talking about in Downward Facing Dog. So you want to feel that, that external rotation when you're in Down Dog, even though your hands are flat on the ground. So feeling that rotation and then lifting the crown of your head. And this is Tadasana or Mountain Pose. your upper body 
and how it feels. Because we want to maintain this feeling of the upper body, even though we're gonna be doing these other poses, these other shapes. We talked about transformation. When we do these poses, they're an opportunity to bring your awareness inside, inside the body. We're re reuniting or uniting. In fact, the word yoga itself means to unite or to yoke, to yoke our individual selves with the divine or with the larger self, however you want to conceive of that. And when we take the time to do these poses, even just taking the time to focus on something that normally you just wouldn't think about standing, can you take the time to really focus your attention inside on standing? Stay where you're at or turn back again. So folding forward into another forward fold, you know, begin to warm up the legs a little bit. So start by, warm up the hamstrings, start by just bicycling your knees back and forth. I'm gonna kinda keep moving with that, almost like you're wagging your tail if you were a dog or cat. And now, Planting your left hand and bending this left knee, you can lift your right shoulder up to the sky. I'm not sure what this is called, but I like it. Kind of a revolved forward fold. Continuing to breathe. And the same thing on the other side. Plant your right hand and bend your right knee really open up. I know I'm no no to face the camera with my back. And coming back down. And I'm going to uh, stand back up and uh, do a couple of standing poses. So starting with Warrior Two. And Warrior Two is uh, a really nice foundation to give ourselves. Uh, starting with the, the base of your, your feet, your right, we'll start with the right foot is parallel to the short edge of the mat, and then take your left foot and turn it 90 degrees so it's pointing and imagine or see a line straight from your heel of your left foot into the middle of your right foot. And when you have that set, take just a second to notice what's happening with your hips. This is actually what's called an open hip position. And a lot of times we want to kind of cheat because it's not as easy to, to keep our hips open. So we want to kind of take a second just to notice that. And then, then you can bend that left leg. And again, feeling evenness in both legs. being careful not to overextend the knee pass. You don't want to go too far this way. You don't want to be inside or outside, but setting this. And then at that point, I like to really drop my shoulder blades down before I lift my arms up and even lift my hands to the, the palms of my hands up to the sky and feeling the shoulder blades drop down, head lifts up, and then I will turn my hands over look straight over my left index finger. This is warrior two. And feel the foundation of your feet and your legs holding you up. And it's also a good feeling to kind of almost feel like you're pushing two walls away, extending out from your core both directions. Dropping the right arm down to your thigh and lifting your, flipping your left hand and reverse warrior. This is a side stretch. 
now we're gonna do what's called extended side angle. So coming back to warrior two, and flip your left palm, make a 90 degrees with your left arm, and put your left forearm on your thigh just above your knee. And a lot of times people will have their arms straight up. I particularly like to kind of have a line, straight line of energy. And the key here is opening up your shoulder up to the sky so the upper part of your, the, the high shoulder, the right shoulder is gonna lift up. Yeah. And coming back to warrior two. Straightening your left, left leg. And then reaching as if you're kind of grabbing for something off the edge of the table and let that drop you down to a triangle. Trikonasana. And it's a challenge sometimes to keep, keep your plane, keep yourself in that, in that plane. Sometimes we want to kind of collapse forward, right? So keeping that up. And coming back up. And taking your left foot and pointing it back 90 degrees. We'll take just a moment here to lift up the arms. And hinging from your hips, hinging from your hips, a wide-legged forward fold. Now here's a great place if you uh, if you are just going this far, that's absolutely fine. Feeling like you're extending up and out of your pelvis, and then breathing in to extend forward, and then as you exhale, you can go a little farther. Inhale, extend and lift, and exhale a little bit farther. Inhale, extend and lift, exhale a little farther. Just allowing yourself to only go as far as the hamstrings allow. No need to go too far. I happen to have really flexible hamstrings. And coming back. And we're gonna do the same sequence of standing poses, but on the other side. So we'll take our left foot now and Left foot is parallel to the short edge of the mat, and the right foot is, turns out 90 degrees. And the line right from the heel of your right foot to the middle of your left foot. Take a second to check your hips. And then when you get set, then you can bend the front right knee. and dropping the shoulder blades and then flipping over warrior two. For many years I actually, this, this was kind of a throwaway pose for me. I didn't really understand it. And only in the last few years have I started to understand what this pose is teaching me. All the poses are an opportunity to reconnect our body and our mind. That's the idea. Just as I said, yoga is about connecting ourselves, our smaller self with the larger self. And we'll drop the left hand down your left leg. Reverse warrior. up here or if you want you can really 
that line of energy, lifting the left shoulder and left ribs up. If you really want some more intensity, lift both arms up. That's not easy to do. This is a beginner focus, so it's absolutely fine. Coming back. Straightening your right knee and reaching forward as if you're grabbing something off the table. Again, feeling that Tadasana, that feeling of being really extended and, and stable in the upper body as you lean forward over here to Trikonasana. Legged forward fold. Turn your right foot 90 degrees back and again pulling your belly button up. And uh, if you have a chair or something, that's absolutely fine to, to put your arms on if that is feeling good or continue to fold forward, breathing in and extending. Inhale up. Heel toe your your feet together just a little bit. We're gonna do one of a forceful pose, horse pose. Make your your uh, heels to come in so your feet are pointed at 45 degree angles then drop your butt down, keeping your body straight up and down in a horse pose. And again, how far you go down is how far you want to push your muscles. So we will stay here for 45 minutes. I don't think so. Shoulder blades coming down your back. Arms in a touchdown position, cactus arms, and coming back up. Take just a moment to practice a balance. Take a moment to practice balancing. And keeping things uh, pretty. Um, Balancing has always been hard for me, actually. I've just been getting it over the last few years. After all these years, it's always tough. So we just we just go from where we're at and work with it. We'll take just a one-legged Tadasana. So take a couple seconds just to revisit that idea of Tadasana. Again, check your tilt of your pelvis, shoulders, extend the shoulder blades down, rotate the arms a little bit, and head, crown of the head lifts, tuck your chin. So feeling this stability, can we lift up really just a little bit of weight off your right foot. See if you can't not adjust or change anything in the upper body by doing that. So we're just taking baby steps here. If this is uh, feeling good for a balanced challenge, that's absolutely fine. Or, you can really ground into the left foot and lifting the knee up, just up to a 90 degrees as if there's a saucer on your, on your knee. Or if you really want a little more challenge, you can Open up your right hip and put it either put your right foot on your calf or above your knee. I'm not quite that good. Or just kickstanding is fine too. So either one is fine. It's a little harder on the lumpy ground, but okay. And then take
take a second to shake out the left foot. Just five seconds to feel Tadasana again. And feel your weight really sinking into your right foot. And then lifting your left foot up a little bit. See if you can lift the left leg without changing your upper body too much. And again, lifting up 90 degrees. Sometimes if you feel like it, you could whoa. lift your arms up, tree. This is actually tree here. opportunity to practice. We're going to do one more uh, standing or upright pose and it's going to be probably, probably the hardest thing we'll, we'll do here in this hour. Um, start facing the short edge of your mat here. Facing forward, lifting your arms up overhead. And exhale, fold forward, plant your hands around both feet and step your left leg back to a, a lunge. Take a moment to feel the extension of your left leg all the way up through your head. And uh, again, if the option to uh, have your knee down feels like a good one to you. That's entirely fine. You can do this next um, Revolve twist either way with your knee down in which case come up hands prayer heart center and then take your left elbow and latch it on the outside of your right knee and Twist and again staying here with the knee down is fine See if I can do that with the knee up. And breathing in, noticing the idea of transformation. There's old texts in the yogic tradition called the Yoga Sutras. Patanjali is considered the father, so to speak, of modern yoga, and wrote 196 aphorisms. The second says, yoga chitta vritti nirodha. Yoga is the cessation of the fluctuations of our mind. Yoga happens when the fluctuations of our mind cease. And when we're challenged, that's when we can try And revolving back to your neutral lunge. Step your right foot back this time into a, into a plank. And that idea of the elbows turning outward, outward rotation. And now I'm gonna lift up into downward dog so we get a chance to practice what we were talking about with the shoulders and the external rotation of the arms. Lifting up to downward dog. Sometimes it's nice to drop the knees and lift the hips higher and then let the heels come down. But this is mainly to feel that rotation in your shoulders which will open up energy through the upper shoulder area. And, and this time we'll walk our feet towards our hands. And uh, 
forward fold. Extend the right foot back this time to a lunge. And dropping the knee if that's feeling like where your body is at right now. And then coming up, hands at heart center and taking the right elbow and tucking it. To see Steven again. foot forward and lifting up all the way. Now we'll take just a second to transition into our seated position again and start your seated forward fold and if need be here's a nice thing to do with your blanket under your knees is actually absolutely fine to do. That feels good. And I'm going to sit on my blanket again too because I can feel I'm on a slope backwards. <laughs> and inhale, arms up overhead and flexing your feet folding forward from your hips, only go as far as your low back feels like it's wanting to go without collapsing. And tucking the belly button in towards the spine will give you a little bit more movement. Breathing in to extend up and over. And as you exhale, you can go a little farther. Breathe in, lift up, extend, exhale, Release a little more. And rise up and we'll extend out both legs to a wide leg, forward fold. I'm not gonna forward fold, just wide legs. I really like doing a wide-legged side stretch. It's really nice, feels really good. So the key to this is um, keeping both of the bottoms of your behind as rooted as you can on your, on your mat or your blanket. So take your right arm, flip your palm, bend your elbow again, and then just put the inside of your right leg, the arm can go either down or if it's fine that way wherever it feels good to you and then take your left arm and open up now here's where you want to keep the left side of your bottom down and really open that up and again opening the heart and the shoulders up to the sky really feeling that As you exhale, you can drop your left shoulder and left arm down and bring the belly button to be in line with the right leg, the right thigh, and then lean over your right leg. If grabbing the outside of the foot is there, fine. Here's a good spot for having your belt. If the belt is going to give you a little bit of a help and you can use it as a, a strap if you were at a yoga studio or maybe you got a strap you can do it with a belt or without the belt either way I'm really feeling the 
this side, open up your left side. center, same thing on the other side, make your belt close by, turning your left hand, palm up, bending your elbow, and either right on there is fine, that's absolutely fine too, or a little bit more, and again, trying to keep the right side of your pelvis rooted, and then open up to the sun. belt can be handy. Just using the belt to help guide you and bring in your belly button over your extended left leg and keeping the right side of your pelvis grounded. back and do a Baddha Konasana. So sitting on your blanket, you bring the heels or the soles of your feet together and draw your heels up towards your perineum, maybe grabbing with your hands and then dropping your shoulder blades down, lifting the crown of your head, tucking your chin and really feeling the length lifting up as you go up higher. Now for more sensation, you can fold forward over your legs at this point, just as far as it feels good. And gently moving your blanket off to the side down onto your back on the mat. Have your belt close by. <clears throat> Oops, can't have this under me. <laughs> Oopsie. All right, so take a moment just to really feel your arms and legs stretch out just as if it was the early morning. And, and draw your knees up to your chest and give yourself a hug just to give a little counterbalance with some of the work we've been doing. You can even take your knees and do circles with them. In both directions. And at this point, I'm gonna grab your Grab your belt and do a supported legs up the wall. So with your belt or your strap, you're gonna extend both feet, the soles of your feet to the sky and attach the strap over the balls of your feet. And this is what's really cool is if you, if you grab and hold on the weight of your arms, balance out the weight of your legs and you can find that sweet spot where there's absolutely no effort just staying in this position. And dropping the shoulder blades down. This is legs up the wall, supported. You can actually do this up against the wall, which feels really good. Again, the idea of transforming if you were feeling some anxiety because of all the happenings in the world before we started. Notice if you feel different now. Notice how your awareness is now inside your body. And maybe CNN is not quite as present or whatever have you. We can come to times of difficulty and challenge better. We are our highest selves and our highest
ourselves are not when we are in fight, flight, freeze mode, which is, well, I can tell you for myself, I've been in quite a bit, more than I would like to admit, but I, I've, I've had some struggles in the last six weeks. This pose here is, I've been told, is the best for combating anxiety. I got an ant on my, or somebody on my wrist. Okay, and just allowing both legs to extend long, just to take just a moment. And draw your right knee into your chest and extend your right sole of your foot up and take the belt again over just the right foot this time and grabbing with the right hand and using your left hand as a, a, a help, a balance, a stabilizer and start to open up, keeping the left side of your hips down and as soon as your hip starts to open up, just stop. Just go only as far as you can, where you can keep your left side of your buttocks down. And allowing your right arm to guide your right leg open, really open up the inner thigh. This is a really nice exercise for giving yourself bit of an opening in the thighs and hips. And then using the right hand to guide your leg back up and then switching. So we're now going to do a supine twist with the belt helping us. This time extend your right leg, I'm sorry, your right arm, right arm out and right leg is gonna be drawn over your left side for a twist. Again, only go as far as it feels good. Don't go too far on this one for sure because this is an area where your low back can get injured. Mid back too. You can hear the spring peepers helping us to transform. Dropping so the right leg down and pulling your left leg into your chest, left knee into your chest, extend the left foot and then attach the strap or belt and then opening up. Trying to keep that right side really grounded. And coming back up, lifting your leg back up switching your hands and drawing your left leg over your right body, the right side of your body. Extend your left arm straight out from your shoulder and look over your left shoulder and keep your left shoulder planted down for a supine twist to the right. center. Oh, and straightening legs and arms one more time for an extension and bringing in the knees to the chest and really giving yourself a hug. Extend both legs long. Prepare for Shavasana, which is corpse pose. palms, if it feels like a good idea, turning the palms up or down, either way is fine. But whatever you decide to do with your hands, try and draw your shoulder blades down so your shoulders are tucking a little bit underneath you, which extends your head a little bit out of your shoulder girdle. And breathe. Just allow all the work that we've done to start to sink in and integrate. Feel the weight of your body sink into the floor. 
you need a blanket or want to put something over your eyes, it's a good time to grab that. And continuing to breathe even more deeply. Feel the muscles in your forehead. Start to relax, melt your face. I think the sun is melting my face. <laughs> the muscles in your jaw. Chitta Vritti Niroda. Yoga is the cessation of the fluctuations of the mind. So we transform through the poses to find our true nature. Take a few minutes to enjoy a rest while Stephen and I play. Enjoy your rest.
Notice your breath. Come a little deeper. Let the deepening of your breath start to bring life into your body. Feel your breath coming in and out of your heart. Placing something, someone that you're grateful for into your heart. And breathe in and out of that gratitude. As you breathe in and out of your heart, feel life starting to come into your body. Just like the squirrel's body. Start to move some of the smaller muscles fingers or your toes. Maybe starting to move bigger muscles. If it feels good to stretch, you can stretch. Staying on your back is fine or if rolling to one side feels good, that's a, a good thing to do too. Feels right, you can push up and roll onto your bottom again to a seated position. Taking that grateful heart and the breath that has been firing your heart like a furnace feeling how we can bring this to those around us, first to our lives and then to those that we encounter. Knowing that we can rise to challenges, breathing deeply, it's been my profound honor to be able to share this time with you. I hope it's given you some peace. Thank you so much for joining me. Have a wonderful rest of your day, afternoon, morning, evening, whatever it is. Namaste.